Hi. It's June and every year around this time, even though I am a knitting pattern designer, I find myself wanting to be outside in the garden. So that's where we are today. Uh, come tour my June garden with me. This year we added four new beds, the four metal ones you see here. We added them by putting down some cardboard, some just flat matte cardboard that we had from various packages and also from moving and added some garden soil purchased in bulk and this year I added this lovely squash tunnel but as you can see here I am searching my squash for squash buying poor eggs which we are deep in battle with. I will admit for a few very hot weeks in May and June we had heat waves and I was outside every day searching for eggs and it was completely miserable. But I'm happy to report that all my squash, winter and summer, as well as all my cucumbers have survived and are thriving. I'm seeing a decrease in the number of squash vine borer eggs and I'm really hoping that's the end of the season. Um, these messy beds are looking much better today. And we're even getting our first winter storage pumpkins. Last year we had a home-baked pumpkin pie for the holidays uh, from a pumpkin I stored that I grew and I hope to have quite a few more pumpkins for storage this year than I did last year. Pretty much all our spring plantings have bolted and which means gone to flower. Um, you see here the yellow flowers, those are mustards and some purple ones over there for radishes and a cute little bumblebee that's getting some nectar it's been really delightful to see these flowers that i've left in the garden for the pollinators come into use by them i think it's so cute and it's great for my summer plantings as well so i definitely don't mind leaving these flowers here for a little while longer plus the radishes make these really lovely seed pods that I like to snack on in the garden and they have these beautiful little purple flowers. The snap peas and snow peas have definitely come to an end. I'm leaving a few pods on vines for seeds. That's my first time seed saving for these so we'll see how it goes. My children have enjoyed many large snacks. They'll eat whole handfuls, one or two cups at a time and um, this little pea trellis that I made early in the spring has really given us a lot of great early food. What you're seeing here is my first ping dong eggplant, which I'm really excited about because it's from my home country of Taiwan, and this is the most common kind of eggplants that are cooked and used in Taiwan. I don't really get a chance to eat this much, so it feels like a huge blessing to be able to plant it myself in the garden. This one's about to lay on the floor, so I think I'm going to have to harvest it soon before it rots due to contact with the soil, but I've set it on a little leaf there to try to prevent that from happening. This is another type of eggplant I have as kind of like my cohabitating backup plant. Um, it's a very prolific grower called Moneymaker. It's from Japan. My understanding is that it's some kind of cross between like the traditional Italian style and the Japanese style eggplant. So it kind of has like a plumper shape than the typical long eggplant. I love the flowers of eggplants and last year I couldn't get them to germinate at all inside. So I'm really, really pleased with my success this year and I'm counting 15 to 20 flowers on every plant. I have four plants. In the same bed there, I have some nasturtiums for some visual interest and also three shishito plants which are very prolific and very mild peppers that my family and I love. They're so delicious, just pan fried until they're a little bit blistered and a little bit of oil and then we toss it with a bit of soy sauce and sesame seeds and it's a beautiful vegetable side that we all enjoy. We've been placing 
flowers dotted throughout the garden and they are all thriving and look so beautiful. I'm so pleased and while their companion planting uh, chops are scientifically dubious, <laughs> nevertheless I love having a little bit of flowers in every single bed to attract pollinators. This year I have five or six kinds of peppers, a chocolate beauty that's shown here. I've also got, um, aside from the shishitas, I've also got Jimmy Nardellos, which are an Italian type sweet pepper. For the spicier types, I've decided not to go too spicy this year because I'm worried that my kids will get into it and hurt themselves in the garden. Uh, so we've got some cayenne, we've got a uh, Thai dragon, and what's the last one? A jalapeno. So some pretty mild, mildly spicy peppers. If so far it sounds like I've been neglecting my tomatoes, you would be correct. I grew them with great success last year, even with the drought that we had. And this year I have 11 varieties growing and they're pretty much in autopilot. I have grown tomatoes in pots for several years, so moving to in-ground was extremely easy. It was absolutely kind of like a step down in difficulty and I find them quite easy and quite fun to grow so here are some tomatoes this year i am doubling down on cherry and currant varieties because uh, in the heat and the drought the beef steaks do kind of get stunted and they're not able to fruit and produce as well but last year the cherries and currants just kept going through the heat so i planted quite a few more of those So that's it from me today. I hope that you've enjoyed having a little look-see into my garden. Um, if you have any questions about any specific plants and what varieties I have, please don't hesitate to put them down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. I'm still very much a beginner gardener. I've only been doing it a few years, excepting tomatoes, which I've grown quite a lot of. But uh, I'm happy to share what I know. What are you growing this year? Are you going for food, for fun? What's going on? I'd love to know more. I'll be back in a couple weeks with some sewing and some knitting and a new pattern coming soon. Talk to y'all soon.